to Jai Long and this is Make Your Break. Whether you're a big-hearted creative or an aspiring entrepreneur, let's take action on your dreams. Reconnecting you with your why and giving you the how. I'm here to dish out actionable mindset tips and fun industry secrets to help you blow up your biz. From eye-opening reality checks to motivational gold, no two episodes are ever the same. So tune in weekly, skip the FOMO, and let's dive into the deep together. Hey, do you ever get the feeling that you are under-delivering to your clients or you might get a negative review? You might get a bad review, you might upset your clients, maybe you won't deliver on what you promised. Maybe you've overpromised and now you can't you can't over deliver. Do you ever get that feeling? Or maybe a feeling of being an imposter. You have that imposter syndrome or just feeling inadequate when it comes to your work, your business, your craft, and actually charging what you do and charging what you're worth and delivering on what you charge. Now I know many of us do because I've talked and taught so many creative entrepreneurs over the years. And one thing is a lot of people ask like, what do we do when we get negative reviews? Or how do we keep our clients happy? Or how do we deliver on the over promises that we actually make? And if you know me, I love sales and I talk about you must over promise and then deliver, right? Never under promise and then over deliver. Because that's just starting a relationship on a lie. And that's an old sales tactic that's from the 90s and 80s that's outdated now. We don't need to be doing that. If you listen to my podcast, you already know this. But if you are a make your breaker, you know that you want to be over promising and then delivering on that over promise. Now, I do have an episode on sales if you want to dive into that a little bit more. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But today we're going into talking about how to uh, avoid under delivering. One really important thing, how do we avoid under-delivering? So today's episode is going to be really important and I know there's going to be so many practical tips for you, so make sure you do get your pen and paper out. This is not just inspirational and getting you feel, you know, getting you feeling motivated for the, for the day or for the week. This here is stuff to write down because I know there's so many things that you're not doing right now. Before we get started on this episode, this episode is brought to you by Studio Ninja. Studio Ninja is a CRM to help us look after our clients. So if you've got a whole lot of clients and you need a good workflow with questionnaires, your contracts, sending out invoices, um, understanding when you need to send out emails and things like that, not double booking yourself, knowing what the next step is, Studio Ninja is the thing for you to host and hold your whole business under. So if you do want 50% off, they've given me 50% off for your first 12 months. You just need to use the code FREETHEBIRD, all capitals. I'll leave that just below the show notes as well. And if you do have any questions about Studio Ninja, just send me a DM on Instagram, which is at jialong.co. Okay, first thing I want to get into under delivering, where most of us under deliver is on social media. Social media, we under deliver so severely, a lot of us, many of us, and we don't even realize it, right? One thing I want to say to you is I want you to remember that everyone is coming to you to work with you, whether you're a wedding photographer, you're a designer, you're a musician, you're an artist, whatever it is, everyone's excited about what they're doing. So for instance, if someone's getting married and you're a wedding photographer, Chances are they've never been married before and they're really, really excited about diving into the world of wedding photography and their wedding and what's going on. Now, what happens is a lot of the times we get a little bit jaded and a little bit bored of our own work and um, don't know what captions to write anymore and we feel like we are repeating ourselves. So then we end up writing really boring captions. So we post a photo again and we say, you know, X and X got married this weekend. It was lovely. Problem is, That doesn't really spark any joy for anybody. It's not interesting. It's not noteworthy. It's not shareable. It's not uh, remarkable. It's not any of those things. And it's not exciting. So you haven't instilled any kind of excitement into or any value for your clients. 
So we've got to understand that we've always need to be on the train to sort of educate our clients, inspire them, show them that we're passionate, show them that we are the experts, we have the authority. And we can do that through captions and communicating and talking and telling stories with our clients. Now, it doesn't matter what field you're in. If you're a graphic designer, for instance, like I want to jump on and know that who you're working for and why, why you're doing what you're doing, how that's going to help their business. And it allows me to use my imagination of me hiring you as my designer, and I'm going to get the same results that you're talking about. Now, there's so many cool things we can do on social media that we don't do. Like one is could be like a case study with one of our real clients. Doesn't matter if you're a musician, doesn't matter if you are, you know, a wedding photographer, portrait photographer, like most of us, we have clients. And even if we don't, we can go and shoot for someone for free to do a case study so we can hear about the experience that they had. And when you do a case study, it's different to a testimonial. A case study means you're actually doing a study on their case, right? So you ask them, what was it like before you found me? How did you find me? What was it like once you got in touch? What was it like after the actual event date? And then how did you feel? So that way you're bringing people on on a journey and a transformation. And that's what a case study is all about. The other thing is... A lot of us, we don't post enough. So if someone jumps on your Instagram and they're like, oh man, I want to hire this wedding photographer and they go over to Instagram to have a look and they're like, oh, they haven't posted in three weeks. Like maybe they're not in business anymore. Maybe they don't care. Maybe they're not busy. Maybe they don't shoot weddings. Maybe, you know, it's a part-time gig. And we start thinking about all these things because on social media, we're so used to people serving us all the time. And look, I'm with you. I get it. Posting on social media is a long haul it's hard. Why do we have to be on this train where we've got to post all the time? But trust me when I say, the more frequently that you show up and consistently that you show up, the more people are going to take notice, the more people you're going to reach and affect and probably and potentially turn into clients. So it would be nice if someone is jumping on your website and then all of a sudden they get over to your social media and there's a fresh post from you and they're like, oh, they're active. They just shot a wedding on the weekend, actually. And this is what they loved about the wedding. And this is what's going to help me. And I can imagine myself using this wedding photographer and me potentially one day having a post just like this on their account as well. So I do think, yeah, social media, a lot of us were severely under delivering and it comes down to our laziness. You know, so many of us, and this is a hard love, but so many of us say like, oh, Jai, you know, I don't know what to write on captions. And and in fact, I don't like writing and I can't be bothered and I can't be bothered learning something new and I can't be bothered pre-planning and working it out. So I'm just going to write one, you know, just a one-liner or even not even write anything, just put hashtags underneath. And I've got to say, like, it's just not good enough. If you are serious about your business and you're serious about serving your clients and you're serious about, you know, running your business at the highest level and you being at the highest level, then you need to start acting like it. You need to start pre-planning out those good, hard hitting captions and inspiring your perfect clients and getting them emotional. So then they move towards making a change, which maybe you're influencing them and persuading them to actually get on your website and book you. So that's how we need to be acting. So please don't under deliver on your social media. The other way we under deliver a lot of the times is on our blog. You know how important blog posting and and blogs are. And you know that I talk about this all the time, especially if you're in the business map and, and if you've heard any of my content before, but it's insanely important. And I always say like a blog is like the engine to your car and your car is your website, right? And it's not going to drive anywhere unless it's got the engine. And it's the same as your website. You're not going to be ranking on Google. You're not going to keep that retention. You're not going to better serve your clients. You're not going to create that connection. If you don't have a blog where you're actually showing up and serving the Patreons that jump on and actually look at your website. I mean, you spend all this time on social media and doing all this other stuff, but then you fell short when they got on your website and you didn't actually serve them, didn't inspire them. You didn't connect with them. You didn't serve them with so much value that they had to share and save your website and come back again and again and again. So a blog is a great way. And the way that we under deliver, one is if we don't have a blog because we can't be bothered, hey, we're under delivering. We just have to know that, right? You can outsource that now. You could even use my guys, which is jialong.co forward slash pepperstorm. Pepperstorm do a great job and there is no reason to not be doing it. I mean, they're incredibly affordable and they do all the research and they can create stuff. They'll actually put it into your blog. And so you can actually start blogging straight away on really good things to help your clients. Now, one reason why it's important is don't forget, 
I know you've probably been doing this for a long time, but again, let's just use this as an example, a wedding photographer. If someone gets on your website and they see that the last blog post that you've done was a year ago, it feels uneventful. It doesn't feel exciting. And the content is probably outdated and there's probably broken links and all the rest of it. And we need to keep our clients excited about what we do, excited to come back to our website so we get returning visitors and so full of information that they don't need to go anywhere else because you've got all the great resources right there on your blog. So keep things updated. And one bonus tip, you don't actually have to write new blog posts. You can update the existing ones. Make sure the links work. Make sure if you've got one that's like 10 best, you know, wedding venues in Melbourne or something, you can go through maybe a few of them shut down. Make sure that it's all up to date and write that you've updated it for 2022 or 2023 or whenever this is and, um, and keep relevant. Because again, we're just getting things exciting. Now, the next one is insanely important, and I can't stress this enough. And this is going to actually help you out so much. So please listen to this once more, share this with a friend, because this is going to help a lot. One thing that is going to change the game for you is setting expectations. Now, I know you're under delivering on setting expectations. And one reason why I know this is because I actually, in this last month or two, I have gone through a hundred plus websites from ambitious wedding photographers. And I looked at all their websites and no one ever sets expectations. In fact, people don't even really post too much about what they do, where they are. We are falling so short with delivering that it's actually crazy. We are severely under delivering on our website. If someone gets on your website and they don't know where you are above the fold straight away or what you do, that is under delivering because now I have to actually work hard and search around. Maybe it's in the footer, maybe it's in the little description, like where are you based? What do you do? What is your style? You know, can you travel? If I can't find those things, man, you're under delivering. So it's setting expectations with everything. If I go through your website and I don't know what services that you offer, Again, let's just use a wedding photographer to start with. If I get on a wedding photographer's website and I don't know if you got a second photographer, I don't know if you have videography, I don't know if you have an album, do you do prints, do you do big days, do you do short days, elopements, engagement shoots, you know, there's so many questions and many of us, we don't say anything. We just say wedding photographer based in Melbourne and that's it, right? But I want to know, like set those expectations and let me know as a consumer, as a site visitor, like what it is that you actually offer. So then I can at least get in touch with you because I know that you're serving me with what I want, right? I mean, do you sell wedding albums? Is it a secret or is it on the front page of your website? Like I want to know these things, set those expectations. Another expectation is obviously when someone gets in touch with you and where your call to action is on your website, which is usually at the bottom of your website there, you have a nice strong call to action and you need to set expectations around that call to action. Now, as an example, I want you to write something like, your next step is to send me an inquiry. All you have to do is press the button. Once you do, fill out the form and then you can expect to hear back from me within 12 hours. I cannot wait to get started on your wedding day right? So if you have something like that, it tells me the time frame, but it also tells me step by step of exactly what I've got to do, which is so, so important. Now on your contact page, same thing. I would love to see expectations. I'd love to see, are you there on weekends? And if you're not, write it to me. So I'm not waiting on a Sunday to get a return email. Like, are you, do you have delivery email hours? Do you have office hours? Like, when will I get an email back from you? Set those expectations. Okay. Next thing is with expectations, you really need to clearly outline what it is and when it is that you're going to do things, right? So expectations is going to be talking about like, when are you going to get your photos? Are you going to expect emails? When would the work be delivered? When can you expect like whatever it is that you do, right? So expectations need to be set. And that way your client, you're doing the hard work for your client. So that's, that's delivering. This is not even, I'm not even talking about over delivering right now. I'm just talking about delivering. Okay. So many of us were severely under deliver and we don't even set expectations, which brings me on to my next point. And this is an insanely important one. And this is how you're going to avoid a lot of negative reviews and a lot of feeling inadequate and not delivering on what we promised. And that's communication. So next tip is communicating. Now, communication comes in so many different ways, obviously, but I want to give you a few different tips and tricks here. I mean, we don't want to under deliver, right? 
And so a lot of us, we book in a client and then the work doesn't happen for a year's time or six months time, depending on what you do. But there can be checkups, emails and things like that to our clients to see how they're doing. We can like maybe send out a gift or something. We can, we can do so many things in that period. Now, one tip is I actually use um, Studio Ninja. I gave you a, the reason why I actually gave you a 50% off voucher for this one is because I'm, I'm actually recommending it here. I actually have a workflow in my Studio Ninja and it reminds me of when I've got to send an email to my clients. So if someone books me and then I'm actually doing the work like six months later or a year later, I will have a workflow where every few months it reminds me to write them like a nice email and just check in to see how you're doing, right? So that's not under delivering. That is, that is just delivering, I believe. It's not even over delivering. I just think that's delivering. So communication, I want you to think about this one. And this is what most people do wrong. Ask the right questions. You must ask the right questions and you must listen. We're going to communicate now. So communicating, if someone comes into my studio and, you know, they want to book my wedding photography packages, the first thing I do is I ask all the right questions, which could be like, what's most important to you? What do you love about my photography? What is going to be happening on the day? How many people will there be? What time? You know, all these questions, why, when, how? Once I get all that written down, I can actually start communicating with them what I'm going to be doing, how that's going to work and if it's going to work. Now, when I say if it's going to work, don't forget, someone might say, hey, Jai, we want to get married and we want photos on a mountaintop and we're getting married in the city. Then, of course, I'm going to effectively communicate, set those expectations and say, hey, I know that you love photos on, on mountains. And you know what? We could actually go and get some photos a week after your wedding on the mountains before your wedding day. There is no mountains in the city, unfortunately. So we just need to bear that in mind. And this is actually how your photos are going to look. And I'll probably show them a gallery of what photos look like in the inner city, you know, venues. So clearly communicating, but also asking the right things, because think about this. If someone comes to me and the way that I can fully deliver on what they're wanting is I'll ask them what's the most important thing. Now, many of us, we go in as wedding photographers, we go in and we work on the wrong things. So instead of asking what is the most important part of your day, we go in and shoot every wedding just the same. And if it's just the same as everyone else, you're going to get unhappy people because some people, their wedding dress is the most important thing because the mother-in-law handmade it. And if you didn't ask the question, you didn't know. So you didn't get enough photos of that dress. Some people, they do all the DIY styling themselves. They put in so much time. One partner did most of the work and they want to get that photograph. They want lots and lots of photos of the styling. In fact, sometimes I've actually hired a second photographer that I've paid for just to come in to take photos of the styling because I knew I wouldn't be able to do it because I was off shooting the ceremony and other things. So I wouldn't actually be able to do it. But because I knew what the expectations were and what the most important thing was, I was able to pivot and change and I was able to actually hire someone to come in for an hour to shoot those important photos for me. So then I took control and now I'm delivering on what's expected of me. Does that make sense? So it's really easy for me to do this. Imagine if someone said, hey, Jai, like styling, don't really care. Just do not care about it. Like I paid for it, but it's all good. Of course, I probably wouldn't take many photos of the styling. I'll take photos of them. I'll take photos of their friends and their family and other things. If styling was the most important thing, I'd probably take less photos of their friends and family and more photos of the styling. That way I know that they're going to be completely satisfied and I'm delivering on what I promised. And you know me, I'm always over promising. I over promise. This is going to be the best coverage you can possibly get. How do I do that? It's because I communicate and I set expectations so they know what's realistic, what I can do, and I will work with them to make sure that they are absolutely in love with what I'm doing. Now, other things you can communicate with, really important. Communicate with them like, for instance, if they want to get featured somewhere. If they want to get featured in a magazine or in a blog or on your, on your Instagram account or something, like don't be surprised afterwards if they're upset, if they don't get featured or if they're not on your Instagram account or all these things because they just didn't simply know. And it's always your fault. You've got to remember this. You did not communicate. You did not set the expectations. And that is the truth. So tell them, hey, there might be a chance that this wedding get, might get featured. Would you like me to submit it in? Or would I? can I send you a questionnaire at least so it's ready to go? And I can't promise you it's going to be featured because I'm not the editor of the magazine and they're always choosing different things. But at least now we're, we have a chance, right? 
So I'll let people know that so then they know. And I'll also ask them, do you want to get featured? Do you not want to get featured? Do you want to be on my Instagram account? Do you not want to be on my Instagram account? Do you mind if I share these things? Do you not mind? So I'll ask them all these questions and now they know exactly what I'm going to be doing. Now, one other thing is, of course, like with communicating and setting expectations, the amount of times that I've seen people well, in the wedding photography space, like complain about their clients putting, um, like cropping their photos, putting filters on top of their photos, posting them wrong on, on social media and doing all these kind of things. And they blame their clients. But guess what? Everything is always our fault. You know my mantra. Take control, take responsibility of the fact that you didn't communicate or set expectations. It is always your fault. So, With that in mind, what I personally do is when I send out the finished images, I actually send out a beautiful card that's beautifully designed that goes with the images with a few other prints and it clearly tells them exactly how to post. In fact, I have a folder of images that's already recropped, ready for different social media platforms. I talk about those folders and how to use them, how to post. I talk about how you don't need to put a filter on it because I've already done those things. If they need a change, they can just let me know. I talk about times of the day that they could post. I talk about so many different things because now I'm setting expectations and I'm communicating and I'm teaching, educating my clients on exactly what to do. So if they did do something like that, which they've never done to me, I would be so surprised. I take control, I take charge and I deliver on these things. Remember, I am the professional in this situation. I overpromised. now I'm delivering. Okay, so the next one. Next one would be upselling. Now, too many of us, we under deliver by not upselling. This is just dramatically the worst thing that happens in any industry, right? And as creative entrepreneurs, we get so insecure about our pricing and budgets and all these different things. But look, If you're not upselling the correct services, then you're only doing yourself an injustice and and having that proper communication and setting those expectations. And I want to give you some examples on this. Imagine someone walks in and I'm a wedding photographer and I said, Jai, one of the most important photos for me is photos of all my friends and family and the photo of the back of my dress when I'm walking down the aisle. Like that's the most important thing. Now, they tell me their budget's $3,000 and they tell me all the other details. Okay, correct. Okay, so I would like to let you know your budget's $3,000 and this is what it'll get you. Only one photographer. And to be honest, the way that that looks is I can't actually get photos of your friends and family because I'll be with you guys taking portraits and shooting the ceremony. Now, if you do want those extra photos, I'm going to have to get an extra photographer. If you do want that photo of you walking down the dress, uh, the back of your dress walking down the aisle, Honestly, I can't do that because I'll be at the front and I need to get those important photos of the parents, of the partner, of all those other things. So my suggestion is we need to upgrade to the $4,000 package because that includes a second photographer and has the most value. If you want the best coverage on your wedding day, I know it's out of your budget, but you already stated what you actually want. So you get to choose. Do you want what you want or do you want to stick to the budget? With that in mind, if they choose to stick to their budget, then you've done the right thing because you set their expectations. They won't get those photos. You've communicated clearly with them. What are they actually going to get? And you allowed them to take the option of actually getting what they want or sticking to their budget. Of course, I always say, yes, you can stick to the budget. No problem at all. I can do it. But there's a difference and a gap between your budget and exactly what you want. And as long as we communicate those things, you're not going to get a negative review. One of the most important things ever, okay? I don't want to stress this enough, but seriously. So yeah, upselling the right things. Now, there's so many things that we need to upsell and we need to upsell them at the right time, but it comes down to communicating and setting those expectations all the time. We sometimes think that people have a small budget. And here's an example. I always upsell people that have small budgets because they will come to me and say, Jai, my budget's $2,000 and we want 10 hours coverage and we want this and that and this. And, and I'll go to them and say, yeah, sure, I can do your budget. There's no problem. But look, this is what you're missing out on and, and what you are actually wanting is this. And this is $5,000. How's that sound? Or I will say this, if their budget is $2,000 and one 10 hours and then I ask them, you're going to get a videographer, you're going to live stream this, yeah, yeah, we're going to hire someone else. So I'll say, look, I know this is out of your budget, but I can do it for $6,000. That includes 10 hour coverage, all the things you want, a second photographer. I can also hire a videographer that's going to come and we can do a live stream as well. So in fact, it's out of your budget and it's going to cost you a little bit more, but it's actually going to save you money because you don't need to hire someone to do the live streaming or a videographer. So how does that sound? 
Now with this, of course, most of the time, they're probably going to take you up on that. Funny that they're spending more than their budget because we have to understand, and this is a lot that I teach with sales, it never comes down to budget, honestly. Like the only time it actually comes down to budget is when you're too cheap because then it's like, of course, uh, you don't fit my budget. My budget doesn't allow for shitty photography at a shitty price. That's what we think when we see something too cheap. My budget allows for really good photography at a really good reasonable price because I'm willing to spend a bit more for more quality, high quality, more value and for people delivering on what they promise. So that's how we think. And so a lot of the times we get insecure when we start lowering our prices. And of course, you'll probably start getting less bookings. Or if you don't, you're just going to get less quality bookings. And it's going to get harder and harder. And you're going to flip from thriving to surviving. It's a downhill battle to the bottom. So I want you to think about that. But upselling is one of the most important things. Now, if, for instance, if you're a designer and someone comes to you and they said, hey, I want a logo and I want a website and I want um, the website to rank on Google and I want all these things. My budget's $2,000. Easy to make sure that you could upsell them because what I would say is, look, $2,000 will get you this and this, which is really not much. And it's doing your business an injustice. Now, your business is incredible and what I believe is going to get your business to the next level is actually the $10,000 package because what that does is includes your whole redesign, includes a new website to work exactly how you need it to work. It's going to help you with upselling the right things at the right time. It's going to help you creating that full client experience. So you're delivering on day one all the way through and you're going to rank on Google. So you're actually going to get more traffic and it's going to help you convert more of that traffic into leads. So in turn, this investment is going to pay itself off so fast. So now the choice is yours. Would you like to spend $2,000 and cut those corners or would you like to upfront the $10,000 now and get that extra work? Upselling is one of the most important things because if you don't do that, this is what happens is they will pay $2,000 and then they'll get disappointed that it doesn't rank in Google, it doesn't convert, the website doesn't look that great and nothing looks as good as they thought they would. So there's a big disconnect because it's not their fault. It's your fault for not setting those expectations. Again, doesn't matter what industry you're in, you always need to have clear communication, set those expectations, because if you don't, there's going to be a disconnect of what they expect and what you're actually delivering. And chances are you're going to under deliver on the promise that they think they're going to get from you. So you need to change that, take control, take ownership, take responsibility of your own success, and you need to start delivering on those damn promises. All right. (laughs) I can't stress that enough. Okay, so last little tip that I want to say on this one is not actually listening to your clients and not changing, adapting and pivoting. So important. Now, the amount of times that I've heard my clients say, um, we didn't go with that person because they, they just wouldn't take credit card or we didn't go with the other person because they just wouldn't do a payment plan. They didn't understand or because they didn't upsell me the right thing that I needed or they didn't have a second photographer or an album. They didn't have websites. They didn't have like whatever it is that you offer or all your competitors offer, right? So it's, it's so important to create things that people actually need or want in a way that they want it, right? So make it easy for them. And I always say this, you have to work hard so your client's life's easy. You don't want your clients to work hard so your life is easy. It's not how business works and that's severely under-delivering and that's what most of us do. And the way this looks is if I am a business owner right now and I say, Hey, my price is $2,000 for my services. No, I don't do payment plans. I'm not a bank. No, I don't take credit card. There's too many fees. You just have to pay me the money within three working days or this is not going to work. Now, that's all well and good because you're trying to make your life easy. But what if you had some empathy and you thought about your clients? What would actually work for them? Hey, if you don't know, maybe ask them. Hey, so I know this is $2,000. How would this best serve you? Would you need a credit card? And if you do, would you want me to charge a credit card that's got frequently uh, flyer miles so you can actually have a holiday afterwards? Would you like a payment plan? A payment plan might cost a tiny little bit more. Do you mind? So setting those expectations, communicating it. Most people will not mind. So as long as you do those things, I think it's so, so important. Other things to think about, like if you're running a business and then you're charging and dollar and diming people and you're charging taxes on top and you're charging credit card fees on top and booking fees and all these type of things, you're just making it like a bit of an icky situation where you're just showing people like, oh man, I've got fees and I'm just passing them on to you. 
your clients are not signing up to you and booking you to pay your bills. Like that's not what they want to do. So don't burden them with all your bills and all your fees and all the things you have to pay. It's not for your client to pay. It's for you to pay. So maybe in a situation like that, just increase your prices a tiny bit, include it all in, become all inclusive, one-stop shop. Hey, you, you sign up with me, I'm paying for it all, baby. That's my business, right? So super important. And I want you to really, really think about that. So listen to your clients, listen to them deeply, listen to their emails. Don't miss any of their questions because if you do, you're going to be severely under delivering. And guess what? Communication always leaves clues. And the amount of times that my clients has said something and I realize that's one of the most important things. Now, for instance, and, I, and I'm using wedding photography here because uh, I've been a wedding photographer for so many years. Think about this. Like the amount of times that one of my clients comes in on the meeting and they go look, oh, my grandfather, he hasn't been out of a home, you know, the nursing home for so long and he's coming and making a special trip. He's at the end of his life, but he's actually going to be there at my wedding day. Now, when someone says that to me, they're not saying, Jai, can you take photos of my grandfather? But I know that's what they want. And I know if I spent half an hour taking less photos of the styling and taking photos of grand like the grandfather with nice lighting and really setting up a really nice scene and really putting in some effort to get some photos with them. I know that's the photo that they're going to love above all else, like above the wedding dress shot, above, above the flower shot and everything else. Right. Or maybe they're excited about a newborn child that just came in like, Oh, my brother just had a baby. It's the first one in the family. It's so exciting. You know, you need to go and get a photo of that baby. So Again, listening to those clues, writing them down, being hyper aware, use a platform like Studio Ninja to put all this information. I put so many notes in from any question that they ask, all the communications. So when I go through, I can just look at it all and I can absolutely serve at the highest level, and make sure all of my clients are happy. And trust me when I say, yes, I've had bad reviews before. I have learned this all the hard way. I've literally done this through so many different businesses and this is what I've learned and these are the mistakes that I've made. So you don't have to. Again, I just want to say like, there's no reason to under deliver. Like I want you to over promise and, and actually deliver on that promise, right? If you want to be a luxury wedding photographer, if you want to increase your prices, like that doesn't just mean increase your prices and call yourself a luxury wedding photographer. That means attention to details, communicating, setting expectations, charging what you actually worth to make all these things work, creating a client experience that your actual clients would talk about you, recommend you, leave a good review, like turn things around. Because one thing I know in business, and this is if there was any takeaway, if there's a takeaway today, let it be this one. The transaction always needs to be unfair. Your client always needs to have the upper hand of the deal. They need to walk away from the deal going, man, we just had the best deal. Like, I don't even know how Jai did it so cheap. I don't even know, like, he worked so hard for that money that I feel so good that I paid him. In fact, I wish I gave him a tip. I wish I actually paid him more. And that's how you need to walk away from every single deal, okay? So let and allow your clients win every single time. And the way that we do that is we provide tremendous amounts of value and we deliver on those promises. Again, you don't need to be a high-end photographer or high-end or whatever you, that you do. But you do need to set those expectations and you can set expectations. Like, hey, I shoot 100 weddings per year. This is what I do. This is how affordable I am. And these are things you won't get. It's just a really easy way. Straight away, you're setting those expectations and you're promising, you know. So promise me why I would want to go with you over anyone else. Like promise me what you're going to do. And this is why I don't like the whole scenario of starting a relationship on a lie by like under promising and over delivering. Like the people that teach that stuff, man, you've got to run for the hills when you hear stuff like that. Because one, it's just nasty <laughs> to do something like that. Like the reason being, right? It's an old sales tactic where it's like, oh yeah, we'll do this. So then that way we get a good review and that way they're going to recommend their friends and we're going to get more sales. But what we're doing is we're going to deceive them by like not even telling them what they're paying for. And then we're going to give them what they pay for without them knowing afterwards. Like, Let's not be dishonest in our businesses, please. Let's just tell them exactly what they're going to get. Let's tell them exactly all the way through. I'm going to email. We're going to have checkouts. We're going to have a wine together. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. This is when you're going to get all the things. Then deliver on it. It's as simple as that. Because guess what? Do you think someone's going to go with you that's actually promising all those things and can deliver? Or do you think someone's going to go with the person that under delivers, says nothing, and then over promises and under delivers, right? 
We just don't. So again, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode and you got a lot from it, make sure you share it with your friends because I know there's so many creative entrepreneurs out there that would love to listen to this episode that would really help them out and it really does help me out as well. So share the love. You know, we want to create a village of all the people around us that we can keep helping up as we get the success and we find the tricks and and the secrets. We want to share it with everyone around us. So just screenshot this. Put it on Instagram and then just tag me at jialong.co and I'll write you a message and say thank you. So I appreciate your time and I'll see you next week. 